Hi, this is B from Sorcery Soap, and we're going to make strawberries today. I want to show you how to make strawberries. They're not that hard, and you don't need a mold. So this is white with, this is pink with a little bit of white, and just different colors. are new to the channel this is soap dough which is pliable cold process handmade soap and in um, many of my books I talk about um, basic shapes and this is just a basic shape okay so there we go so I'll make it with a darker color and so this is what it looks like when it comes off the you have to mash it up a bit and don't let this fool you because that's not what it looks like when you mash it up this is what it should look like from us and I teach how to make this soap dough like this because there's a quality you want to it you don't want it to be too sticky but again you, you know too hard and it's not it's gonna break and cleave Oops. So in, in my books, I talk about basic shapes like um, like a cone, like that. So we're kind of trying to achieve that right here, but um, I skip that step and just go into that shape right there. And one of the reasons I started to mold soap dough is because I had more ideas than I had money for molds. And the molds are, some of them, can be very expensive and so I thought how can I do that myself maybe I can do that so that's what I started to do and this is how I ended up with this whole process for myself of how to make how to make shapes um, without molds because I wanted to be able to be flexible and make the things that I wanted to make so now we're going to make the tops and while I make the top of the strawberry. I'm going to let those set for a second so they're not going to be quite so... I'm going to give them a little spray of alcohol. The alcohol helps dry the surface of it. So alcohol helps to dry the surface. Water helps soap dough adhere to each other. So I put it in plastic so I don't um, get soap dough on my cutters. So these are the cutters. I think I'll use this size here, but that size would be good too. We'll do two. And so that the also the lines are cleaner. We'll do two of these. Let's see. That one, no, this one here. And this is just a little Dresden tool. So if you're looking up just this tool, that's what it that's what it's called. But they come in if you order a bunch of fondant tools, font these are called fondant plungers. If you order a bunch of those, you can get a set and this will come in it too. 
they're very inexpensive. I just it's the shape of the tip that I like a lot. But I try. I'm I'm doing my best not to order anything that's it's like I don't know that's not going to last anymore. I just had a conversation with somebody yesterday on Facebook about things that are meant to be they're uh, purpose purposely obsolete. I think the only thing that should be purposely obsolete <laughs> or that will disappear is soap. That's meant to disappear. Okay. I'd like to keep, like I have my sugar shaper tools, which are my favorite, favorite tools. I just don't have, they don't have a shape like this necessarily. Um, my sugar shaper tools I bought uh, five or six years ago and they're still going strong. See, even with my carefulness, I still got a fuzz right here. It's just crazy. It's like it just flies in the air. Okay, so now, just put a little water on it. Okay. Let's leave that set for a second and then I'll show you how to do the spots in it. We'll do this one. This is a little, let's see. I think I like the bigger one, so I'll do the bigger one. If you have any questions about soap dough, just leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to try and help you the best I can. I did write five books on soap dough. Well, I authored five books. The last one doesn't have much text and it has over, almost 200 images in it though. And um, so I, I know a little bit about soap dough. <laughs> so if I can help you, I will. I'm happy to try and do that. I've worked a lot with soap dough. I'm not sure there's anybody else in the world that's worked as much with soap dough as I have. And there's still answers, questions I can't answer. So that's why I say I'm, try, I'm happy to try and help you. It's kind of an overwhelming thought to think that's how much I've focused on one project. But that's what I've been doing for the last six years, seven years. So see these little crumbs right here? This is one of the reasons why I use plastic and I try not to use, see how it gets all right through here? I try not to use this directly, but sometimes it doesn't cut all the way through because these little crumbs make it look mm, less neat handed, we'll put it that way. So, and I like things to look neat handed and if I do that too often, then it takes in, see, I have to clean it up this much. And I don't, I don't prefer to do that. I like it to come out like this one. Well, this one has a little bit of thing here. A little bit of scribida there, whatever. Okay. So there we go. There's those. And then I have this tool, which I don't know what it is. I just ordered a bunch of metal tools about six years ago so I can't even tell you exactly where it came from I think I got it on Amazon I don't know but I but where Amazon got it I don't know but it's this this is the shape of it and that's what I use to make these little dots speaking of which there's soap in here 
think a little bit. No, that's just the way it is. There's soap in there. I make these little dots and I try to make them kind of uniform because nature is kind of rhythmic. And it kind, kind of has a uniform to it. So you can see where I'm doing this. And I would have done this, so for not the camera, but I'm doing this all at one shot. I would have left these a day or maybe an hour and done the strawberries first and then put the top on so I could put these little dots all the way up through here. And the reason I'm putting the dots are because they're the, I didn't want to make the um, seeds. So you can hand roll and make these little tiny, the little, little tiny seeds. I didn't feel like doing that. So I wanted the impression of the seeds versus the actual seed. And then I put um, on the picture of the sugar birds that I just made, the soap that I made with the little hummingbirds on them, I dusted them with um, uh, iridescent mica, I think it's called Blue Enigma from Nurture Soap and so that they have a shimmer on them so that that helps to enhance these little these little impressions on there to just give the impression of the seed. So you, here I am doing this and this will be probably a 10 minute video so that these are completely doable for a, a very large amount of soap once you get into the rhythm you just do all these so imagine putting strawberries because i wanted the strawberries to go along with the sugared strawberry fragrance oil that i used so imagine you're going to make 40 bars of soap let's say and you want one strawberry for each bar you just sit here and make the 40 and it's not that big of a deal really and then you have 40 bars of really interesting soap with a little strawberry on it. You don't have to go to all the detail of making the hummingbird like I did. I mean, clearly you can if you want. And for 40 bars or 100 bars, 100 strawberries like this would take me probably about two and a half hours, three hours maybe to make 100 strawberries because I would do them all at one time. I'd just sit and make all the strawberries at one time. And then I make all the tops and put the, or you know, do the seed part first and then put all the tops on and then you're done. So I don't even know if it'd take me two hours. But anyway, that's my point in doing this. And you know, if you're just starting out, keep doing it. Your hands will get faster. You'll see more little tricks and insights as you go along. And, and if you have a little soap crumbs, just put some water on it. So there you go. I hope that helps on how to make sugared or to make strawberries anyway. They're not sugared necessarily yet, but if you have any questions, I answer all reasonable questions. So um, ask me a question about soap dough. All right. Thanks very much. Bye.